What's up guys, welcome back to another Arc Dev Kit tutorial. So, in this episode we're going to be looking at a couple of different things. The first one is level streaming, so that's really important for map optimization. It means that Arc isn't always loading in everything that it needs at once, it only loads in when it's required by a player. And then the second part is going to be caves. They do kind of tie in together, so we're going to look at them both in this first part, and then hopefully finish off in the second part. So before we get started, I'll say a massive thank you to everyone who's helped out by supporting the channel. It's really great to see so many new people around commenting and of course liking these videos as well. And I hope that we can continue to grow while I make them. So now let's get into it. So the first thing we're going to look at is level management. Now before we start this, we do need to go up to our window drop down menu and open up the levels window. Here we go. So this is where we're going to manage all our levels from. And then we're going to go down to here. What I've done here is in our mods folder, in game in the content browser I've created a folder called tutorial map that's the name of this map that I'm working on and then I've moved the main map file into this folder which is tutorial map level now next to that I'm going to create some new levels so create a level click off it and we're going to create three so that's one for the trees and the bushes and all the foliage one for all of our rocks that we're using to create the landscape with and one for our dino spawn. That's just for now, as the map gets bigger and we have more things to it, we would be adding more levels to separate everything up so that the game can load it all in together. Now, as you can see, each one of these levels has a little star on it and that means it hasn't been saved yet. So to combat that, we're gonna click on each one, right click and rename them. So let's call this one tutorial map underscore foliage. And then we hit enter. You can see now that's saving that level, so hopefully the star will disappear. There we go, and you can see that's now been saved and it will stay in this folder after we've closed the dev kit and it's saved as part of the map now. Then we can do the same with the other ones. Rename. There we go. So we can see now that all of these have been saved. So our folder for our map now contains four different levels. So now what we need to do is actually import them into this level viewer so that we can move things around between them. So all we have to do, just drag them in. Now, one of these levels will always be highlighted in blue and that's the one you've got selected. So what you're working on, you can imagine it like you're working in Photoshop or something where you've got different layers of every picture. And this is like that with the map. So now we're selected on rocks, we can't really select anything here. When we go back to our persistent level, we double click to change levels. Now we're back to our main map and we can select everything. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to go to our foliage tool. And we're going to copy all of this foliage over into our foliage level. So to do that, we need to make sure that we select all of the different foliage we have in our map. Some of them are selected already, you can see. And then we're just going to hide all the details so it makes the window a little bit smaller. There we go. So now we're going to click on our lasso tool here. And that's going to make it so that we can select a whole bunch of stuff at once. And then we're just going to drag around the map. As you can see, it's selecting everything that we've placed with our foliage tool. So now that we've got all of this selected, what we can do is go to this drop down menu here. It will probably be a blank one for you because I've already been playing around with this a bit. And we're going to select our foliage level. Now we're going to press this button here, copy to selected level. Press that, press yes. And that will copy all of our foliage over to the new level. So now what we're going to do is with our persistent level selected, select all of this foliage again and hit delete. And then you can see that there's still some left behind and that's because it's all now on our foliage level. And if we hide that, you can see there's nothing left apart from these little ones, which obviously didn't feel like getting deleted. Let's get rid of them. There we go. So now we've got a much bearer map, which is going to be useful for the next stage in a minute, which one we're going to be creating our cave. So obviously if we're completely surrounded by trees and rocks, it's a lot harder to work on the landscape. So we've just got a couple more things to do. Next, we're going to move on to our rocks. See, I've got a few placed 
as a bit of a cliff over here. So, go back to our place tool. And then, we're going to select these rocks. So to do that, I'm just going to click on one, and then hold down Alt Grab. And select these. Right click them. Edit, and copy. Then, we'll just move to our rocks layer. Right click. Edit. And paste. Now, hide that layer. Head back to our persistent level. Select these rocks again. Delete them. Then if we bring back our rocks level, you can see they're there again. So once again, it's just making it a little bit easier for us to work on our landscape. If we don't have them there, we can properly see everything. And then the last little bit we're going to do for today is our spawning volumes. So make sure we're still on our persistent level. And then click on one of these. Then obviously hold down Alt Grab and select the rest of it. And obviously you do this for as many spawners as you had in your map. Whether you had one big one or a few little different ones dotted around a beach or whatever. Select all of them together. And then right click. Edit. Copy. Head over to our spawns level. Right click. Edit. Paste. There we go. Let's hide that. Go back to our persistent level. Select all of these and delete. Bring back the level to make sure they're there, and they are, which is great. So, now we've got all that hidden, we can actually start to work on our cave a little bit. So, I think I'm going to make this a two-part tutorial, because the caves can take a while, and there's quite a few different elements to them, and I think I have heard there's a few bugs around it. So, I'm going to have to look into that and find a couple of ways around those bugs to make sure they don't affect us. But in this first episode, we're going to start by creating the entrance to our cave, surrounding it by some rocks and creating a little bit of a floor for it. And in the next episode, which I'll try and get out as quickly as I can, we'll cover actually creating the inside of the cave and going down under the landscape. So, the first thing I'm going to do quickly is I'm going to grab this tab here, and I'm going to drag it over into this window. And that just makes it so I can see my levels anyway. It's just a little tip. Um, if you want to move stuff around, you can grab the tabs and change where you have them. Now things down here, or obviously keep it over here as well. Makes it a little bit easier, you know, to navigate around things. So to get started with our cave, we're just going to go over to our landscape tool. And then where we have our sculpt tool here, we're going to go down to visibility. This is the important bit. The visibility is obviously going to select what parts of the landscape you want to be visible, or in sense of the game, there. So when we make something invisible in the landscape, it won't be there in game and we can walk through it which is how obviously you make holes for the caves let's go down to here i think i'll make my little cave entrance here so as you can see i've got my brush on a relatively small size here maybe make it a little bit bigger there we go and then if i click here wait for it to do this i'll make a little cut here so you don't have to wait there we go and now you can see we have made a hole in our landscape which just goes down to the water underneath and it looks like it goes through both sides when you go down to this. It doesn't, it's just that landscapes are invisible from below. So it is just a hole in one side. And I don't know if you've ever been flying around the map in Ark, and you can see that these holes always render in first before the cave inside them. But that's what they look like without all the rocks around them. So, to make this a little bit prettier, I'm just going to extend it a little bit. And then we're going to start to place some decorative rocks around the outside. It's a really important part because that's obviously not very pretty and it needs to you know it needs to look like part of the game so we're going to use some rocks from the content browser and static meshes to put around it and make it look a bit nicer so to do that obviously first go back to your place tool and then up into the game and to be honest to get to these rocks literally just do a search for rocks there are so many that you can use you know all the different ones from scorched earth in here now and then some cliff rocks and there is an endless amount and obviously there's different material as well. If you like the shape of one rock, you can swap it around. Different material. And yeah, as you can see, there are so many to go through. So, I'm just going to pick a few out. If you want to make it a little bit easier for yourself, you can use a filter. So if you go to your filters drop down here, select static mesh. And it's only going to show you the meshes for rocks. So those are the whole rocks and not just materials. Here we go. So now we can actually look through a little bit easier. So, the first one I'm going to use... Just go for one of these. 
maybe not. Yeah, look, you can see this is one of the ones that would have been used for a big cliff in the landscape. That is way too big for our cave. So let's get rid of that. Find a different one. Let's go for this cliff rock here. Let's drag it in. As you can see, it's quite big, but we can just drag it through the map and you won't see it. There we go. It's all about making the cave look aesthetically pleasing, obviously. It's a very important part of making a map. And then you hold down Alt and click on one of these arrows and drag away. It actually makes a copy, which is a really quick and easy way to get through this. Let's select our rotation tool up here. Rotate it a little bit. There we go. Move it around some more. Can be quite hard to see while you're doing this. If you're finding that you can't see your hole in the landscape because of all the shadows and stuff, go up to this little button here where it says lit. Click on unlit. Doesn't look as nice, obviously, and it can be a bit painful on the eyes, but it means that you can see a little bit better when placing things like this. Go back up to our rotate tool. Rotate it like that a little bit. There we go. That'll do for now. Obviously, it's not perfect. I expect that most people take a lot more time on this than I am, but I might work on it a little bit more for the next episode. And I've got a bit of spare time. For now, let's turn the lighting back on. And then, do one more thing. Get a nice flat rock. Have a look around. Find one. Here we go. This one here. We've got a flat rock drag that in as you can see it's pretty massive but if we go to our scale tool here we can set it to 0 0.5 0 0.5 0 0.5 a bit smaller now obviously we could go a bit smaller if we needed to let's drag it down move it around a little bit and what we're doing here is we're going to create just a little floor for the entrance to our cave for now it makes it a little bit easier to test it out when you've actually got something to walk on. So it's not poking through the other side. Now, one little tip for when you're doing this, don't worry about if things don't line up properly. Like you can see here, it's kind of level in there, but the landscape isn't meeting up with it here. Quick little solution to that is go into your landscape tool, get yourself a nice small brush size, go back to your sculpt. Now you can just come down, hold down shift, Surprise, mother All right, guys, and we're back. So, after that little interlude there, um, I have kind of moved the cave a little bit because, uh, unfortunately, the dev kit did roll back a bit and did lose everything. But, so I've moved it down to this side and obviously sorted out all the levels again and stuff. Um, and I've just surrounded it by some rocks. If we switch down to detail lighting, you can see it better. It's got a bit of a rock floor there as well. So what I was trying to show you before we were so rudely interrupted was that if you use your landscaping tool with the visibility and you hold down shift while you're clicking you can actually bring bits of the landscape back in which is really useful for when you're doing this if you realize you've cut out a little bit too much of the landscape you can actually just click and bring it back in and then of course use the sculpt tool to just push it down obviously you do by holding shift and then you can lower it down Make it into a nice little ramp. Just use the visibility tool and get rid of that little bit. There we go. So, there's a couple of last little steps you do need to take, um, which are to do with these rocks which I've placed now. You obviously need to select them all. These are all the ones I've placed here. Um, and they all have to have the same collision setting, obviously, which is block all, because otherwise you'd walk into a cave and just fall straight through the world. And you can set the floor one to ground, if you like. That basically means that you can place things on them. But if not, just keep it set at block all, and that'll do nicely. And then we're just going to right-click, edit, copy, head over to our levels, and right-click, edit, paste. Hide that. Jump back into the persistent level, select them all again, and get rid of them. And there we go. So, 
now we've got all this done we're almost ready to get going and actually play our map and see how it works now there's only a couple more things we need to do just to finish setting it up properly so we need to head over to our world settings so we can just prepare it for the level streaming and then also we need to go to our modes tab zoom out a little bit grab a camera just drag that in here we're just going to move this guy around a little bit and see we've got that little window at the bottom there's no particular place of where it needs to be a picture of was obviously nice to get it in a nice place that'll do for now now we need to head over to here where it says default camera position actor and then we're going to search for our camera in here there we go so we're just going to scroll all the way down to our capture settings right near the bottom and we're just going to change the sky IBL intensity put that at 0.5 and then under the world tab here we need to check this button, the Enable World Composition. Now, if you don't have this button checked, your map will not stream in the levels. So you'll click play and just spawn into an empty landscape. So you have to make sure this button is checked. And then we'll just round off our kill Z by setting it to negative 40,000. There we go. That'll do for now. So scroll back up to the top, head back into details. And then let's preview our map and see how it works. So, as you can see, I'm in the map now. Got our sheep spawning over there. Let's run over to where our cave is and go and see what it looks like. So here we go. This is the cave in here. Got our torch out. And it's not too bad. Obviously, you've neaten up the edges a little bit. But there we go, so you can see we can go right into it, and in the next episode of this tutorial we will look at extending this cave and making it into a proper cave that we can run around inside. Well, I hope this video helped you guys out. If it did, of course, please leave a like and comment, and of course subscribe as well. I'll try and get the second part of this video out as quickly as I can, and cover making the rest of the caves and some of the bugs that come with doing that. But I wanted to get this first bit out first because the level streaming is really important, and I will cover it more in depth in the future when you've got a big map about how much of it you need to separate into different levels but for now this will do just for when we're designing caves so like i said i hope this video helped you guys out and i will see you in the next one